Hi folks, welcome to Thursday night's tutorial. I'll just wait for a few people to come on. It's always a bit odd this, waiting for people to come on. If you come on, just say hi, let me know that you're there. Um, yeah, and I get a notification about 30 seconds in, so I don't know whether it actually starts to record yet. Um, <clears throat> hi Sandra, happy Thursday. I know it comes around really quick, doesn't it? Um, yeah, so um, you may have noticed a slight difference. Um, I'm actually up in, um, I've got one of my spare bedrooms as a an office. Um, so I've made a bit more room. I put another table in there and I've um, made a sewing area. So when it gets a bit cold in the winter, I don't need to be in the conservatory and I'm doing a lot more sewing at home actually for fun. So. I thought I'd better sort it out and then kind of have my conservatory back for myself. So um, we'll see how it goes here. Hopefully the setup's pretty much the same. So I'm sure I've got, you know, I've, I, I think it will be OK. Um, fairly quick one tonight, but I always say that and you never know. It will probably uh, run over a little bit, but I think we'll be done in less than half an hour. Hi, Elaine. Hi. Oh, you, you managed to find it OK then. Um, so I was just saying that... Um, I've changed room. I normally um, do the tutorial in the conservatory, but um, I'm in my spare room, so hopefully I'm going to stay here if it works. Um, I'll bring the uh, camera down. If you do come on, say hello. If you watch it on catch-up, because I know a few people can't uh, watch live tonight, so they're going um, to gonna watch on catch-up. So um, just say hello. Let me know if you've made one of these as well, um, or if you're going to make one of these. Um, I think when it comes to Father's Day and sewing for men, it's quite tricky. There's not there's not that many things that you can do. You have to be really imaginative. Um, so I am trying to do a few things. I've got something uh, for next week already planned and then I'm working on something for the following week. So I'll try and run three weeks of male, um, male things. So um, this is, um, it's just a cute little bottle or can holder. Um, now it's insulated with some wadding, so when you're holding this, it keeps your hand not so you don't your hands not too cold, but it also keeps the heat off your bottle um, or your can. So um, it fits a normal standard can in as well. Um, and again, for kids, you can um, you can just put a little bottle of pop in there as well. Do people still say pop? <laughs> so um, yeah, it's pretty. Um, Pretty simple to do, although it is quite fiddly because it's only small. So I'll try and talk you through it. Um, now I made this one. This fabric I've got. It's a hundred percent cotton, and it is quilting weight. This uh, both of them are, um, and it's I think it's seven ninety nine, which is a really really good price. Um, so yeah, that's a, a pretty good price. That's per meter, obviously. Um, now I'm going to do the grey one tonight. Um, and I was going to put it with this grey fabric because it matched a few things and then I thought yeah it just it wasn't that clean so I'm going to do it in the red so when you're um, when you're looking to match things up just put put your fabrics next next to each other and just have a little look and see what pops now that to me that is much nicer than the flat grey this grey is lovely it's a nice fabric but not quite right for this so um, you only need four pieces for this and then you've obviously got your wadding. Now um, I'll give you some measurements but I am going to do kits for this. Um, if you don't want to um, if you don't want to buy like half a metre of fabric you, I'll do the kits as um, probably two in a pack um, and I'm going to make some up to actually sew in the studio as well. Um, so um, I'll get them on as soon as I can make them up. So um, basically just two pieces of fabric, the same size. Now I've done these, I've done these actually to these measurements. So, um, so I've worked it out to this. So obviously if you want a bigger can or a bigger bottle, because um, these are the smaller bottles, but the big chunkier ones don't quite fit into this. So you might want to play with the measurements a bit. Um, so this is 25 centimetres by 12 and a half centimetres. You could probably come down slightly. Um, and then the wadding just sits in about a centimetre all the way around um, because then that makes it, because it's so small and fiddly, it makes it much easier to sew. Um, 
and the circle um so the diameter is about nine and a quarter nine and a half so um so yes so first of all i'm just going to grab some pins because it is a good idea to pin i'm just going to put my pattern there pin this so first of all i'm just going to put the wad in on now i'm not a quilter um so you know if you're a quilter you can quilt this properly but i think to work on it the way i've done it is i've actually just very simply quilted it just it's not really quilting it's basically sewn in um equal parts the wadding onto the outer, outer fabric and it just makes it all um just stay nice and neat without it you know rushing up um and you could wash it and then it won't all bunch up inside um what was I going to say then? I mean, if you are a quilter, have a bit of fun with this. Um, you know, it is only a small piece. And I'm just going to pop that in the middle. Make sure it's all in the middle. And I'm just going to pin it. And all I'm going to do is, if I fold it over, you can find your central point. And you can either, you can either press this if you want or you can I can actually see a line there so all I'm going to do is sew down there to begin with and um, you'll have to bear with me because of course this is the first time I've been up in this room sewing so um, hopefully we'll be able to see the same now for the, for the new girls Elaine um, and Joanne is it if you obviously you've if you've not seen any of my tutorials before I've tried a few different ways of um, Putting the camera but this is probably the easiest because you can see from this direction so all i do is I explain what i'm doing so <clears throat> i've put that on the wrong side because obviously that's the outer and all i'm going to do is stitch it there i'm probably not even going to back tack i'm just going to sew down that line which is basically just the crease that i've made if you want you can put a pin in it and follow the pin line down but obviously if you're sewing this way it's a bit tricky so maybe put your pin in on the line and then out further out so you know that you're aiming for the in mark there but you can press it as I say and um, I think I'll put my glasses on and um, you can actually probably use a pencil as well I mean I'm not sure how they quilt let me just turn my treadle over my presser foot not my presser foot my treadle foot Okay, and I'm just going to sew that down. I'm going to pop that on a three and a half. And that's it, basically. Oop. Let me just... It's actually useful if I have some cotton in the machine. I wound the bobbin up before, but I didn't actually set the machine up. So bear with me a sec while I just do this. Always prepared. So when I put the um, the cotton in, I always put the, the presser foot down. It gives me a bit more room to find my hole in my needle. I'll take that one out. I'm going to pop that in there so I know where it is. I mean, you use that little compartment there at the front of your machine. See this? You know, it's got a nice little storage compartment there, but it's also useful for little sweeties as well. Uh, okay, so I'm just going to pop this in. It'll be two seconds. There we go. And do that again. I can just about see that line. Okay. It does feel weird up here because normally I'm in the conservatory and it's very light in the conservatory as well so okay so all I'm going to do now is actually you could measure this so it's about yeah if I if I say four inches I'm going to do it two inches and then uh, no actually I'm going to do it about an inch and a half and an inch and a half because when I do sew the ends there um, that will be about the same width so i'm just going to guess this for now but if you want to mark it off it's not imperative that this is completely straight and neat it just needs to be um it just needs to be sewn on really 
I'm going to move that pin out of the way, put it back in there. Now that doesn't sound right, so I'm just going to take that out. Yeah, something's not quite right there. I'm just going to take that bobbin out because it doesn't feel right. Oh, that's why there is a tiny, tiny, I don't know if you can see that. Where are we there? See that green thing? So I'm not sure what that is. Oh, it feels hard. So it's, oh, do you know what it is? I think it's off. The, um, the actual cotton reel but did you see then I could you can sense there was something something not right so always listen to your machine and um, you know don't ever force it because that's when you'll do your damage so if it sounds not quite right then it won't be right okay back in again yeah that's much better Just so down side so i'm just doing this quickly just to show you basically i'm not even even if you can see but this is just a sample to show you make um you know you can do um like centimeter if you just do whatever you want really just you know centimeter width um, and do lots of lines but i just want to basically keep that on Okay, I'm just going to trim off all of my cottons and I'm just going to trim this bit here. Okay, so what I'm going to do next is I'm basically just going to sew that together. So the raw ends, the short raw ends. Now you want um, about a quarter of an inch seam on this. Um, I normally work with half inch seams, but just for this one. So if you can see where the actual wadding finishes that's pretty much where you want to sew now as i said it is quite fiddly this because it's little but um it is a cracking little little thing and it's you know i think it's a nice little gift for father's day so the lining, um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to fold, fold it over and I'm just going to back tack here and back tack here. Take the needle out and I'm going to leave an opening about about two and a half inches, I would say. And then back tack here and back tack there um, because we need to be able to turn this through. So again, you need um, a quarter of an inch seam. So make sure you back tack. Go down about an inch an inch and a half back tack again needle up and then leave a space about two two and a half inches you're going to close that up anyway so it doesn't really matter don't do it too small because it's going to be very tricky to turn it through okay so that's pretty much that i'm just going to do what i'm going to do with this is i'm just going to go in you know in, in like um, a star shape to, to put that wadding on and um, just make sure that it's central I mean again you know I always I don't rush through these but I don't want you sat bored so I tend to not take as much care as I would if I'm making it for myself so just take your time with it make sure that you, you know your seams are straight and it looks neat But you can see it's fairly fairly quick to make we're just keeping that on actually you can use um you can get fusible uh wadding um it's fairly expensive though so if you've got anything like this this is ideal just trim all those little pieces off okay so now we need to attach the outer to the base now I found this is where it will get fiddly. So the best way to do this is if you fold it in half, now just get your scissors and a very tiny snip on that point there. So if you can see where I'm folding that there. there. Hi Emma, hi Charlie. It's okay, don't worry, you can catch up. Okay, so um, you can just see I've done a little tiny, if I put that on the table, I don't know whether you can see it better. If I put it, where am I? There it is, see there by the eight, see the little uh, notch I've done there. 
So I folded it that way and done it. So then fold it on the other quarter. So match your notches. And then do the same. So if you're using clips or pins, because we're going to put pins in this, I didn't really want to put pins in that as well because it's just too many pins in such a small area. Okay, so this is quite important. Make sure that you work on the bottom, not the top. So find out where the bottom is. And just look where, if you've got a pattern, sometimes you might not have a pattern. So what I need to do now is just fold that in half and you can do the same, just a little snip. And then if you open it and put that notch on the back seam there and then snip that side and snip, let me get that straight, and snip that side. Okay, so what I'm gonna do now that's there, I'm gonna pin it. So just put a pin in the bottom facing upwards i won't bother with the back seam for now because i know where that seam is so i'm not worried too worried about that and what we need to do now is we need to snip into this because this is straight and this is curved if you snip into it you if you try and put that on a let me just take that pin out if you try and make that curve it won't move but if you snip into it let me just do a couple so i can show you Try not to do where your notch is because that might confuse you. So as you can see there, see the way it opens and that'll sit round that round, the round circle base really easily then. So I'm just going to put that pin back in there. Don't snip in too much. We're, we're using about um, a half inch seam, uh, sorry, a quarter of an inch seam on this. So um, you don't want to snip in more than quarter of an inch. So if you can just every about centimetre or so is enough so now it doesn't matter where you put um each pin on this because you know it's all it depends on your um on your pattern placement really um be because it's on the bottom i wouldn't worry too much now if you open your back seam make it nice and flat then and then i'm going to put that seam on my first notch and I'm just going to line it up there, edge to edge, and put the pin in again, facing up. I'm going to find my next notch here where my pin is. Now, I've put pins in here because you've snipped into it. It's easier to see where the pin is rather than looking for the notch. So just put your notch and your pin on together and then again, just pin that. The same with this one now this is where it will start getting a bit tricky in your fingers because obviously getting it under your foot as well your presser foot is quite tricky but persevere with it your first one you'll you may struggle with it but once you've done your first one and you know how to handle it you'll feel more com comfort confident okay and then pin that so that is now you can kind of see that's already wanting to lay flat because i've snipped that it is sitting nice and flat so i'm going to start where the seam is at the back and i'm just going to go a bit further back not start on the seam just a little bit further back i'm going to take that first pin out and hold on to it and i'm going to back tack here and then i'm not going to come up any further than those where those um the little um you know where I've cut it in I'm not going to go any further up or any further down I'm just going to work right on there so about a quarter of an inch seam try to be precise with this because this is measured to that width there you want it to fit properly okay so now the best way to do this is if you can see so see this is holding up just push that down and hold it with your fingers and then just be careful of your pins because obviously you've got four pins in quite a small area. So just give it a bit of a back tack. Now the best way to do this is turn your machine down to a two and a half stitch. And my machine has got a speed control on it. It's got very slow, medium and fast. It's not really fast, but fast enough. So I'm going to put that down to a medium. Because the slower you sew, the more control you're going to have. So just sew as far as you can until and turn it with your hand your left hand i'm going to take that pin out 
as I've come to that actual first notch there. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to lift my foot up and I'm going to reposition. Just move that over to there, foot down and carry on. And see how slow that is compared to the way I was sewing before. Foot up, just going to move that over and take that pin out. I mean, it is a little bit fiddly, but it's nothing that, you know, if you're a beginner, you can definitely do this. It's very good practice, actually, as well, for when you want to start a bit of dressmaking and going around curves. So the reason I'm lifting the foot up is so I can move this and reposition it. So you can do a couple of stitches, lift it up and then turn it slightly and it will help you go around the curve. Oh, I tell you what, that what I've just noticed is normally I'm on a laminate floor downstairs, but I'm on a um, carpet up here and my foot's slipping a little bit, my uh, treble. So I might have to get something to stop that from sliding. Okay. So I'm just going to go. Now I can see that's going to have a little crease there. So I'm going to lift my foot up and I'm going to flatten it from there and then go round. And before you know it, you're back to the start again, so it, it's not too bad, because it's only small. So, if I turn that through now, it's quite a nice base on that. So what I'm going to do, uh, to give it a little bit of space when you put the bottle in, but be very careful when you do this, I'm just going to trim that edge off. Just be careful you don't cut into your stitching. And just trim that down because obviously you've only got a couple of centimeters here. So when you turn that through, that's going to encroach on all of this space here. So you want it to be nice and flat. If you forget that, don't worry. Right, we'll just put that there to one side and then we're going to do exactly the same um, what we did here. So again, that's the seam here. So that is the opposite side to the seam. So I'm going to notch that and open it up. Put that notch onto the seam and then find the new piece there. So basically all I'm doing here is quartering it. So those are now equal, four equal quarters. So when I do the same here, try and... Try not to do too deep a, uh, a notch because, you, again, you don't want that to encroach on your sewing space. So there's my two notches there. I'm going to fold it this way now. Match the notches. And go to the other corner there. I mean, you could do these with um, some nice floral fabrics for, um, for ladies, actually. And if you're doing them for kids, some nice, you know, kids um, fabric would be good. Okay, so again, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put my hand in there. To make, this is that makes it easy if you put your hand there and then you just do your little um, cuttings there. Just a bit of control. Make sure you don't cut in too much. About every bit less than a centimeter, I would say, and don't cut your notches if you can help it. There. And then again, I'm just going to get a pin and I'm going to start. I always start on the seam. I think it's because it's a nice, um, secure um, line to do it on. So you can always, you can start whenever you want, to be honest. But I always start on the seam. Find my next notch and the next notch there and line it up. I mean, if anybody does any craft fairs or kids fairs or things in school, you know, you could make a load of these and um, sell them. You, you know, these would sell quite well, I think. Um, now, I know a lot of a lot of um, beginners don't like to cut out, so I will make up a couple of packs of these. Um, I'm going to actually what I'll do is I'll put on tomorrow um, some photographs of the male fabrics that I've got. Um, and then you can choose which ones you want okay so all I'm going to do this one's a bit easier to do actually because 
um, you haven't got the wad in there so maybe even start on this one um, I tend to like to start on the hardest one and get that out of the way um, it's something I've always done actually and then you can enjoy the next the next one because it, it always feels a bit easier so again I'm just using those two fingers there to twist it as I'm sewing so can you see so those two fingers I'm just kind of twisting it as as the needles going up and down just ever so gently I'm just going to lift that up take that pin out just reposition I'm going to move that because that's starting to crease a little bit under the needle I'm not sure you can see on the camera so I'm just going to turn the fabric towards the back of the machine And then just go as far as you, you can feel it starting to, um, you're getting a bit of resistance on it. And then just reposition. So if we did, if anybody um, remembers the little hearts that we did, um, the stuffed hearts, oh God, that was way before Valentine's Day. Um, it's a kind of similar situation to this, where you're just lifting your needle up to reposition. Um because it does help because sometimes with such a small curve you do struggle now on the lining if you do find i don't think this is going to do it no it's not going to do it but if you do find that you have a little bit of excess fabric and you, you do feel like it's going to crease don't worry so much because it's only on the lining try and get this as as neat as you can because that's on the outside but the lining you don't need to worry about and again i'm going to trim that down and we're pretty much done. We've only got to attach these two together and then top stitch it. And then, uh, yeah, we're done. So even if you don't sew, I'm going to make these and have some in the uh, in the studio. And they can be posted out as well. So to put it together, if you have your outside uh, with your the, um, the right side of the fabric inside, and then the lining, if you turn it out the other way, so the right side of the fabric is out, and then pop it in. So basically, there you've got right sides together. Just push it all the way in. And open, if you put, where you put it in, make sure you've got seam on seam. And open your seams. You can see that there it is fiddly you can see it's fiddly but persevere with it because they are cracking little things just going to get that make sure that's level at the top and i'm just going to pin that i mean you know me i don't pin many things but sometimes seam on seam i'll always pin that because you don't want to fight with it when it's under the machine so all i'm going to do now is i'm going to make sure that the uh, lining is level with the actual fabric and I'm just going to stitch it all the way around. So back tack here. Uh, again, I'm going to start just before the seam. Now, the main reason is when you're putting that under your machine, you've got quite a lot of thicknesses there. So if you're going to back tack, I would start here and finish there and then actually sew over the seam. It's much easier than trying to sew over all of those, or back tack, I should say, or over all of those, um, those thicknesses. So I've just got about a centimetre further back. Now this, you've got, you'll probably sew about an inch and then you need to pull it round and carry on sewing. Now I'm actually going to put that up and speed up a little bit more. So just make sure that your edges are edge to edge. And then just sew all the way around. Again, uh quarter of an inch seam for this and then back to here and back to here. so I've just sandwiched those together that's all I've done so when you open it up if you get your hand in now and open it up you see that the way it's sandwiched there together but it's all inside out but if you remember we left a hole there so just be careful popping it through because you don't want to you don't want to force you don't want to rip that fabric there so just if you use this finger here and just poke it up through gently and it'll all come through and then turn that one there as well then, i'm going to actually use my 
my expensive poking um, tool, which is my knit and needle. I'm just going to poke it out. You can actually get your fingers in because this is a curve and just run your finger around the curve and that will bring it out as well. And the same on that one. Now, you can hand sew this, but again, just for speed tonight, that's my opening that we've just turned it through. I'm just going to sew that together. Back tack here and back tack there. I'm using white cotton anyway, so that'll be quite well hidden and it is on the inside, so don't worry too much. Oops. Cut. I'm just going to trim my cottons, get all of that out of the way. And then if you carefully just pop it in, push it all down and then roll it with your fingers. So the lining is definitely on the inside. Now, what I would do with this is I'd probably turn it this way and top stitch it from this side. So that you, that you know that none of your lining is poking through. So again, start a little bit further back. Now, all I'm going to do is because what will happen is if you don't top stitch this, it will roll like this. Every time you put a bottle in, it will just keep doing this. So just to neaten it off, I'm going to top stitch right around the edge. Try and get as close to the edge as you can. Again, this is great practice for. Ooh, I keep knocking the camera trying to grab my treadle. This is a great practice for um, when you're doing clothes, actually. So again, because there's not a lot of room here, I'm just sewing a little bit, stopping, repositioning, making sure that my lining isn't poking up too much. I mean, if you've got a nice contrasting line, it doesn't really matter so much, but I think it just looks a little bit neater. And that is it. Turn it the right way round. Just trim off any cottons. And there's the other one. So I'll put the bottle in there. Pretty cool. And there's the can going in there. So yeah, it keeps your hands um if your hands are warm in the summer, it stops your beer from going cold, <laughs> which is um always interesting. So uh, let me just pop this back up. So I hope you enjoyed that. Quite a simple little thing, um, but great for Father's Day um, and great to have in anyway for men and women. Don't have to be Father's Day for that. So, yeah, hope you like that. Uh, next week, um, I'm going to make a wallet next week. Um, so that will be that will be good. Um, I've been working on that today. Um, again, pretty simple, straightforward. Um, might be about half an hour, so um, if you pop on next Thursday, um, I'll put a notification on to say that um, I'll be doing that. Um, packs, probably um, what, what I'll do is I'll cut pre-cut them and have everything that you need, so all your fabric and your wadding, um, for about £5 for two, um, and they can be posted out as well. So um, I'll put on, yeah, I'll put some photos on tomorrow because I've got quite a lot of male fabric um so there's quite a lot of nice um different fabrics that you can use so if you would like uh, any of my fabrics just let me know obviously it's the wadding as well because you'll get that unless you've got wadding that you can use at home thanks elaine thanks for uh, for joining hope you enjoyed it and then uh, pop on next week as well so yeah so uh i'm back off to ikea again tonight to get another table um it was out of stock last week so uh for when i go back to my sewing lessons in well, the end, end of next month, actually, June. So, um, so yeah, so have a good weekend and I shall see you next week. Um, same time. Lovely. Bye.